By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Friday and that means we are bringing you magic from the Raging Bull series and we have reached round number five. And in round five, we have some spectacular magic for you. We've got um, Wouter Janssen who's playing with a Diamond Sphere deck. Very, very interesting brew who's going to take on Alexander Höper who is playing with a mono green alpha deck and yes it has force of nature in it multiple forces of nature actually i should say um so we're about to start before we go to the actual game i always do a little bit of deck tech i have deck pictures of both of these beautiful decks it's really worth your while but if you want to go straight to the games no worries check the description below there you will find a timestamp click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to first game here we are going to continue with the deck deck we are first going to look at the deck of Wouter Wouter Jans and his diamond sphere deck let's go and here we see the deck of Wouter Jans diamond sphere and it's named after two cards diamond valley and gravity sphere so let me first just talk you through what these cards do. So Diamond Valley is a land from the Arabian Nights. You can tap it and you can sack one of your creatures and then you gain life equal to the toughness. So that's actually quite a good card in combination with the walls that Valtu is playing. So Wall of Earth and Wall of Heat. It's also really nice in combination with the Rook Egg, of course. You can sack the Rook Egg, gain three life and get a 4-4 Flying Drake. Now the other card that's in this deck, uh, that the deck is named after, is Gravity Sphere. So Gravity Sphere, he's playing with two copies of those. It's an Enchant World from Legends. It doesn't see a lot of play, although it's beginning to become a little bit more popular. It's one red and two to cast and it reads, all creatures lose the flying ability. Um, so maybe at first glance you think that doesn't really work well with the 4-4 Flying Drake that you get when you kill your own Rook Egg. On the other hand, it does work very well with the Wall of Earth and the Wall of Heat, you know, really good blockers. Uh, the problem is they're not flying, but when you're playing with Gravity Sphere, that doesn't matter. Another card that Gravity Sphere works really well with is Earthquake, and I'm actually surprised that uh, Wouter has chosen to play with three Fireballs and just one Earthquake. I would think if you have Diamond Valley and you get a lot of life, uh, maybe I would play with two copies of Earthquake or even three copies of Earthquake. But that's just my opinion. You know, I'm not the one uh, who's, who's play tested this deck, right? So forgive me if I'm wrong here, Wouter. I do think it's a really, really cool deck. It's a very interesting deck. It's a deck you don't see often. I'm really looking forward to see this deck in action. And also in action against such a uh, classical aggressive deck that Alexander is playing, the Mono Green Alpha Brew, because that's just full of big creatures that want to attack. So this, this can be a really, really fun matchup to look at. Um, talking about attacking, there's a really interesting card in the sideboard of Wouter, which I think he will board in after the first game. That card is called Disharmony. Now, Disharmony is a card from Legends as well. Legends is just full of cool cards, isn't it? It's just always when I see a cool card, it's usually from Legends. <laughs> I, don't, I just such a cool set, such a big set. Anyway, uh, Disharmony, one red and two to cast. It's an instant. And what it says is target attacking creature comes under your control untapped. Return to former controller at the end of turn. This creature is no longer considered to have attacked. Play before defense is chosen. So this harmony is one of these cards that you can use either way. So you can use it in your combat to, to steal a creature from your opponent and, and get through with your creature and attack and get even more damage in. But you can also use it in a blocking situation. Let's say that um, Alexander was playing with the mono green deck. He's playing with multiple forces of will. Let's say there's a very cool board state that I hope that is going to happen where Alexander will attack with two forces of nature and, and Bowter can cast a disharmony, stealing a force of nature. And then you get boom, you know, both forces of nature die attacking each other, basically fighting each other. That will be quite the play. Now, I don't know if this is going to happen, of course, but that would be would be really cool. I mean, chances are chances are slim. But if it happens, oh man, it will be so nice. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of uh, Wouter. As you can see, by the way, he's got a title at the top there saying Balls to the Wall. So, Wouter, can you let us know what is the, the, the real title of the deck? Is it Diamond Sphere or Balls to the Wall? Because I really like that Balls to the Wall uh, title. Anyway, enough talk about Wouter's deck. Beautiful deck, Wouter. Wouter. Uh, let's go to the deck of Alexander, the Mono Green Alpha Brew. And here we see the Mono Green Alpha deck and oh man is this is this this just a piece of art it's just beautiful it's really it shows the alpha decks always kind of have this thing to show what it's all about you know and i'm just 
It's beautiful. Uh, but let's, okay, let's go through it. Let's look at it from a competitive point of view. Is it also competitive? Um, of course, it's, it's creature based. I mean, he really wants to win with creatures, but I think actually in this matchup, he might be successful. Um, of course, he's playing with four Lanowers, so that will help him accelerate and maybe play his Ice Storms in uh, in turn two, and that could really set um, set Wouter back. I also wonder if as the, the, the match progresses, if Alexander will notice, hey, listen up, he's got a Diamond Valley deck, maybe I'm going to keep my... Um, my um, my ice storms for the diamond valley that's another option and then we see a card that i really 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 love i actually have a beta play set of a giant spider it's just such a beautiful card so he's playing with four giant spiders unfortunately it's probably not going to be very relevant although of course Wouter plays with rook eggs but he also plays with those gravity spheres talking about gravity sphere it's not really going to help Wouter much against this deck only against the four script sprites he's also playing uh with four berserks if we look at, uh, at alexander's deck so basically what he really wants to do is just ramp up with his lanawar elves get his big creatures out you know and and then just use his berserks i mean he can use plenty of berserks he's playing with four of them he doesn't have to wait for the right time he can take a risk or two and just try to get like you know berserk juggernaut and you already have 10 damage in maybe put a giant growth over your juggernaut and then berserk it and you've got 16 damage and i'm not even talking about the two forces of nature they're eight eight tramples if you berserk them with a giant growth on them if you can succeed in doing that and that would be quite the play then it is game it's 22 damage you know and probably uh Wouter is not going to survive that another really interesting card here in the deck by the way is Gaia's Leech so Gaia's Leech is a, is a card you don't see uh, being played very often it's three green and three to cast and the power and toughness are star star so then you already know it's a, I love cards with that and you already know it's going to be an interesting card and it has power and toughness equal to the amount of basic forests you control or just forests I guess so um when Alexander plays it out and if he just has six mana on there it will be a 6-6 six, six. now here's the catch if he attacks with it the power and toughness becomes equal to the amount of forests that his opponent controls so if his opponent controls no forests if it attacks it becomes a zero zero and dies right so that doesn't sound very good but but listen it's got a very cool ability you can tap it and it can change target land into a basic forest how cool is that and especially against Wouter deck that can be quite powerful because Wouter's playing with a lot of well he's playing with Diamond Valley but he's also playing with Maze of If he's playing with Mitra's Factory so it's it's a really cool way to kind of neutralize those lands and um I think is he oh he is playing with those uh the one one uh Forest Walkers it's in his sideboard um I forgot the name now but it's in the sideboard it's one one Forest Walk so I would love to see that synergy but he's not playing in main board though, so probably he's not going to bring it in because he's only got one gas leech. But how cool would it be if he can tap, make a forest, and then use his forest walk to deal damage? That would be like full circle. Um, anyway, another really nice card here and a beautiful card that I that I think is a beautiful card, doesn't see a lot of play, is Force Field. So that's that artifact just above the soul ring. And uh, what it does, you can tap one and then damage from target creature is reduced to one instead. So, you know, you can attack with a 5-5. Five five, and then you can use your force field instead of taking five damage you only take one damage um another card i just want to point out there's just so many beautiful cards in this deck uh is grizzly bears he is playing with the original Gris grizzly bears the original bear the two drop from magic the gathering uh two two beautiful just a beautiful deck i'm really looking forward to see a grizzly bear hopefully it can do some do some damage uh, in this game and um, before we move through the actual games um, I also see a hurricane in the deck I don't think that will do much just like the giant spider but who knows and in worst case scenario maybe it can be the direct damage that Alexander need needs to take the game you know because that's also uh, a way of using hurricane of course so this is the deck of Alexander uh, Hooper uh, let's go to the games and here we go i'm really looking forward to this matchup uh we see that Wouter has taken a mulligan here he's sitting on the right and on the left we see alexander with that force of nature playmat starting here classical start with a lana Elves turn one great start here for alexander and let's see what Wouter, Wouter can do oh i thought maybe a lightning bolt but we see a soul ring instead not too bad for Wouter. that means he can start playing out maybe his wall of earth next turn and uh cheers uh, Wouter. and there's an attack for one so Wouter dropping to 19 here and there's also a soul ring from Alexander that means five mana next turn 
And of course the possibility, if he has a basic line to go to six, and then he can start doing some crazy stuff, he can actually play a force of nature next turn. Maze of if, ooh, that's a bit unfortunate. And a wall of heat, two six wall here from Wouter and a maze of if. So that is pretty good. Wouter building up some, building up his defenses. And Ice Storm here, probably on the maze, exactly. And then maybe next turn we'll see a force of nature from Alexander. So he's setting it up for himself. It's so important in, in, in Swedish. And I know there's, there's a lot of comments on, oh, it's only one strip mine. But listen up, there are so many ways to play with land destruction. And um, I don't know about you, but I always play with Chaos Orb and Strip Mine. It gives me two ways to deal with special lands. And then I usually add two other ways to deal with lands. Usually just land removal, like an Ice Storm or Stone Rain. There we see another Ice Storm. And, uh, or Sinkhole, or like there are so many different cards. So let me know what you do to kind of deal with the special lands. I think there are enough options in Swedish, uh, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, Wouter passing turn here isn't finding any land, by the way, stuck on his one soul ring. He does have a wall of earth and a wall of heat, but if Alexander can play out a force of nature, he's just passing turn for now. There's a desert here by Wouter. And desert is one of these interesting Arabian night cards as well. And tapping four here, a rook egg. And actually, it's not too bad for Wouter. He was stuck on land a little bit, but Alexander wasn't able to take advantage of it. And now Wouter is kind of getting back into the game. And I mean, he's still on 19. It's all good. And there's a chain lightning directly on Alexander. Interesting choice. And that means Alexander drops to 17. And I'm saying interesting choice because usually I like to kind of keep my burn a little bit longer. Then again, Wouter has so much burn in his hand. There we go. There's a lightning bolt. He's going to drop to uh, 14 here. And there's a fireball. Okay, now I now I get Wouter's tactic. I mean, if his hand is full of burn, it makes sense. And that means Alexander is just all of a sudden is on 11. So went from 20 to 11 quite quickly. And he's just unable to find uh, a creature or a threat like... He's just passing turn, which is great for Wouter. It's giving him the time that he needs. And playing a Wheel of Fortune. And he's losing a Gravity Sphere. Interesting choice. So he's kind of thinking, okay, I'm playing against Mono Green. Gravity Sphere is probably not going to be that important. I'd rather play out a Wheel here. And also the Shatter, he thinks I'm not really going to see a lot of important artifacts. So I wonder, I wonder, because I think he needs to shatter against Juggernaut. Remember, Juggernaut cannot be blocked by walls, which is really cool. And of course, Wouter now has the Rook Egg, but that could create some really cool synergy as well. Tapping six here, will we see Force of Nature? Force of Nature. Yes, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. And another Force of Nature, double Force of Nature. And all of a sudden, Wouter is in serious trouble there. Um, and that's, of course, the risk of having to deal with, of, of playing a Wheel of Fortune. It can go either way. All of a sudden, Wouter is from a comfortable position facing two forces of nature, ready to attack next turn. He needs to do something here. Plays a chain on his own Rook Egg. And then, oh, this is really nice synergy, by the way. He plays the chain on his Rook Egg, then pays two red to change the target, and then deals three damage to Alexander. So one chain lightning is giving him a 4-4 flyer and is dealing three damage to Alexander. Remember, Alexander is only on eight and that 4-4 um, that four four has flying. So Wouter only needs two more turns to survive and he's still on 19, which is pretty good. So there's an attack, 16 damage directed at Wouter. Wouter's gonna block on the walls. Remember, they have trample, so he's gonna take four damage here. So he's gonna drop to 15. And then we see a script sprites. Aye, this is a problem for Wouter because he can chump block uh, Alexander one turn. And there's even a giant spider. Remember where I said in the introduction that probably giant spider and flyers wouldn't really be important in this matchup because of gravity sphere? Forget that. This is all about flyers, this, this game. Um, and Wouter's probably not going to attack anymore. I mean, he's on 15. If... Alexander wouldn't have played out the script sprites and the uh, the giant spider and his 4-4 flyer would still be unblockable. Of course he would have attacked, bringing Alexander to 4 and then next turn winning the game. But now the scenario has completely changed. Wouter needs a maze of if, but that's not a maze of if, that's a Mishra's factory. Wouter needs a solution here. Tapping, tapping 5, what are we going to see? Playing a fireball for 5, bringing him to 2... 
Oh, playing a fireball for four, of course, because it's one to cast. Uh, so that means Alexander's on four measly life, but I think it's enough, actually. He can now swing in with two forces of nature. And, oh, taking, probably taking care of the, yeah, of the Mishra's factory here, because it just takes away another blocker. Uh, attacking, wow, attacking with everything, of course. Why not, Alexander? He's on 15, he has to block. I like this move. And there's a Berserk. Oh, wow, 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 wow. There is a Berserk. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. This is what you want to see. This is old school magic. Old school magic is not copying the deck 20 times and playing it every tournament. This is old school magic. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Uh, Alexander, you got this first game. Remember, we still have more to come because this is the best of three. So if Wouter can actually board in well and, and, and win the next one, uh, who knows what's going to happen. Anyway, let's let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up to them in game number two. Game number two is about to begin. It has begun here. Sorry. Uh, it's about to here on the play with a basic mountain passing turn. And we see another one drop here from Alexander, just like in game one. But this time it's not a Lunar Elf, but it is a Script Sprites. 1-1 one, one Flyer from Green. And there we see a Maze of If by Wouter. So he will be able to stop the damage from this one Script Sprite. Uh, and there's another script sprites, two script sprites on the board, passing turn here. And let's see if Wouter can find some actual land that tap for mana. Let's hope. Because I'm kind of rooting for Wouter just because I want to see a game three. These decks are so incredibly beautiful. I want to see a game three here. And there we see a wall of earth. Now the nice thing about wall of earth, it's zero six only for two mana. Now, of course, it's not very relevant at, at the moment because Alexander has two flyers, but remember, Wouter's playing with Gravity Sphere. So as soon as he gets Gravity Sphere on the board, and there we see an Ice Storm here taking care, interesting here, interesting choice, taking care of the Mishra's factory. I was expecting him to take care of the Maze of If instead, because Maze of If seems to be a big problem for Alexander. Remember, he plays with big creatures like Force of Nature. So, I mean, he just wants to attack, and then a Maze of If can become a huge problem. And there we see a Chaos Orb from Wouter here, and he's passing turn. Cannot use it yet, doesn't have a third land available. Well, a third mana, I should say, because he has a, has a third land with Maze of If. Using the Maze of If on the script sprites, taking a damage again. Alexander not playing out any spell, just passing turn here. And I think that's good news for Wouter, it kind of gives him time. If he can just get into a third mana and just play Gravity Sphere, that would already be fine. Just passing turn. I wonder, maybe he boarded out the Gravity Spheres. And there we, oh, this is a cool play. Disharmony, Disharmony, the card from Legends. And you can take over a creature from your opponent, untap it, and in this case, he, use, he uses it as a blocker. So he takes over a Script Sprite to block the other Script Sprite. And all of a sudden, Alexander lost both of his creatures. A really nice two for one play here from Wouter. And I, I find Strip Mine, of course, in this matchup for Wouter is not going to be very, uh, very useful because um, Alexander is only playing with basic forests and there's a Lunar Elf. But things are kind of looking okay for Wouter. I feel if the, if the game takes longer, it's actually good for Wouter because he can start doing all his shenanigans. And here we see one of those. We've got a Rook Egg and a Diamond Valley. That's what you want to do. Sack your Rook Egg to the Diamond Valley, gain three life and get a 4-4 Flyer in return. I mean, and that's exactly what he does here, probably on end step. So he's going to get a 4-4 Flying Drake. It's a red creature, I believe, and that means he can start dealing some damage, flying over the elf, and potentially put Alexander here on 16, playing a Mishra's Factory as well. And Wouter's on 18 at the moment, and Alexander's dropping now to 16. Ah, drawing another land, that's kind of tough. Ay ay ay, things are not looking good for Alexander. Uh, animating his Mishra's Factory, attacking with both here. 4-4 Flyer, of course, unblockable. Deciding to block on the Lanower Elf, playing a Giant Growth. And there we see the Maze of If. So this is actually a nice trick here. At the moment when the Giant Growth is being played out, um, Wouter is saying, you know what, I'm going to take my Mishra's Factory out of combat. Making sure it doesn't get any damage. It doesn't receive any damage either, but he doesn't get any damage. And that just means that Alexander just lost the Giant Growth here on this exchange. So that's, of course, not a good deal here for uh, for Alexander, who is on 12 right now. And 
He's probably going to take four more damage again attacking here with the 2-2. And this time Alexander is just taking the damage, dropping to six here. It's going to be really, really tough for him to win. He needs a hurricane. Ooh, this, this works. At least gives him another turn. Giant Spider here. So he can block the 4-4 flyer on Giant Spider. Or he can choose to wait another turn and block the Mishra's Factor, or maybe Wouter is going to flip the orb. There are just so many options here. If he flips the orb, and if he hits it, yeah, he's going to flip the orb on the spider. And it's a hit. Okay, it's a hit. It's a hit. So Giant Spider is gone, attacking it with the 4-4, dropping Alexander to 2, and there's a Chain Lightning. Okay, that's it. That's it. I, I kind of feel this second game was a little bit one-sided, or actually very one-sided because Alexander just couldn't draw into his big creature threats. And, you know, and Valtteri did a great job. That Disharmony play, brilliant. I loved it. And also, of course, the Rook Egg with the Diamond Valley. That's what Valtteri wants to do. Anyway, it's 1-1. Let's get ready for game number three. Game number three, one, one. And what a matchup this has been so far. Oh, I really like it. I really like it. Uh, one of the things that we've done at Raging Bull is because this is still part of the rounds before the actual uh, uh, top eight. So there were actually six rounds. So this is uh, round number five. So after this, we have another round. And we just try to find uh, the most creative decks and the coolest matchups. And I think uh, I think this is really one of them. Very, very, very nice decks. Very nice to see. Um, exciting magic as well. You know, if you looked at game one, after that, Will of Fortune, Crazy Force of Nature. And you looked at, you know, game two with the Disharmony and everything. I mean, this is what old school magic is all about. Unfortunately, here we see Alexander uh, taking a mulligan. That's not what you want to see in a, in, a, in a decisive game. Or is he taking a mulligan? Because Wouter is also still shuffling. Well, let's see. I mean, if he just takes seven and doesn't put one on the bottom, it wasn't a mulligan if he does. And there we go. So the players drawing their cards, ready for game number three. Who is going to win this one? Round number five of the Raging Bull series. And yes, Alexander did take a mulligan and so did Wouter. Okay, so they both took a mulligan. Okay, okay, that's fair. I like that. Uh, and there we see a good start again from Alexander. Remember last time he won when he opened up with a Lanawar Elves. And let's see, will he bolt or chain the Lanawar Elves? No, again, again, soaring, just like in game one. Uh, and I'm kind of laughing because usually uh, when you play a Mana Dork turn one, it always gets removed right after. Uh, but it doesn't happen here. And there's another creature on the board for Alexander. The Scripps Sprite's 1-1 one, one Flyer. And uh, let's see, is Wouter going to play out one of his walls, Wall of Heat or Wall of Earth? And again, a Mishra's Factory and a Wall of Earth this time, 0-6 Wall. And that can at least block the Lanawar Elf. But of course, the, uh, the Script Sprites can still do business. And here we see the 4-drop, the Giant Spider. And it's really nice to see the Giant Spider. The problem with Giant Spider, of course, is that you've got um, Urnum Jin that's usually taking up that slot. But Giant Spider is actually a pretty good card. I mean, it's it's 1 green and 3. It's a 2-4 with Reach. You know, it can block Flyers. It's, it's a pretty good card. Uh, here we see Wouter, by the way, playing a Maze of If. And uh, that means that probably Alexander um, cannot really deal any damage anymore this turn. Oh, I spoke too soon because there is an Ice Storm on the Maze of If. That means he can hit for one with the Script Sprite, but there is a Lightning Bolt on the Sprite. I think it's it's interesting to see that, that Wouter has really taken the choice not to uh, use his Lightning Bolts and Chains on the Mana Dorks, I think. And instead saying, you know what? Especially the bolts, probably. I want to keep the bolts because what if Alexander attacks, plays a giant growth, um, and maybe then even a berserk, I can still respond with my lightning bolt. And here we see again Diamond Valley Rook Egg combo. That means he gains three life and he gets a 4 4 flying creature. So that's a really good exchange here for Wouter. And uh, we saw that in game number two. We see it now in game number three, and it's really helping Wouter uh, to get ahead here. And he's probably going to swing in. There's, there's not a good block here. At least there's a Berserk playing the Berserk on the 4-4. That means it turns into an 8-8. Alexander takes 8 damage, but in return, the creature dies. But look at this. Wouter can now sack it to his Diamond Valley. Actually gain 8 life. So that is... Wow. 
That is extra tough for Alexander because he has to take eight damage instead of four and he's also giving Wouter eight life. And here you can see how good Diamond Valley is. I know there's a Dutch player called Martin and he's, he's every deck he plays Diamond Valley, he says it's such a good card. Uh, I guess I need I, I guess I need to get a copy. It's such an interesting card. Uh, anyway, attack here with the script sprites again, dealing a little bit of damage to Wouter, but not really making a dent here as Wouter uh, gains so much life. And playing a strip mine and just passing turn here. I mean, if you have life and Wouter has life, it also means you have time. And there we see probably an Ice Storm on that Diamond Valley. I think that's a very good decision. And now he's thinking, am I going to sack my wall of Earth? I think it's good not to because you need that just to block the Giant Spider. And of course, the Lanaware Elf. Interesting, by the way, that, oh, of course, he's got the Mistress Factory. That's why he's not attacking with just both of his creatures here. And uh, so we can see Wouter's three cards in hand. We cannot see the cards of Alexander, perhaps. I think he's got no cards in hand, actually. And let's see, tapping two here, playing another Wall of Earth. Wall of Earth, I think one of the better walls for, for one red and one getting six toughness is it's pretty good. It's a pretty good deal. And, uh, you know, Alexander's like, okay, I'm just gonna ping. You're on 22, you're almost back on 20 again. It's fine, I've got time. Another Wall of Earth, wow. Wow, and that happens sometimes, you know. You just keep drawing the same card that you don't need. And, um, well, at least Wouter's able to block those giant spiders because there's another giant spider on the board. But more importantly, another script sprites here. And what is he going to do? An earthquake. Ooh, this is nice. It, I mean, it is nice in a way, but it doesn't solve the immediate problem because the immediate threat here are the two script sprites. On the other hand, it's also dealing damage to Alexander, already dropping to seven here. And remember, next turn, Wouter can start attacking with his Mishra's factory and kind of forcing Alexander to block it on his Lana Elves. I mean, he, he can let it go, but he's pretty low on life. And that's exactly what he does, uh, what he does animating it, attacking with a 2-2 assembly worker here. And Alexander is chum blocking it on his Elf, trying to buy some time. Attacking again, Wouter dropping to 12. Remember, he was on 28, I believe. And now he's on 12. Problem is Alexander is on um, now on five and he lost his giant spiders due to that earthquake. Tapping three here. And oh, of course he can ice storm the creature, the Mishra's factory, because it's also a land. So that's good news here for Alex. And that means he's on he's on five. He's kind of stabilized. Wouter's on ten here. And what oh fireball, that's it. That's it. Ay 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 ay. Yeah, 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 that can happen. And we can also see a disharmony again uh, in the hand of Wouter. Um, congratulations, uh, congratulations, Wouter, uh, winning, winning this, uh, um, winning this, uh, this round number five of the Raging Bull series. It was really, really quality magic. The magic that I really enjoy watching. Two beautiful decks, very original decks. Uh, we can hear, we can see the deck pictures. Uh, just just absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning. Thank you for, um, you know, being willing to play this match on the stream and sharing your decks with us. Uh, both players, beautiful, wonderful job. Um, this is it for today. This is it for the Friday episode. If you like this tournament, check back uh, with Timmy Talks next week, Friday, because then we will post um, the next round, round number six, the last rounds before we go into the top eight. And that's good. That's a really, that's another, another great match. Um, what do I still want to say? Of course, if you want to support the channel, you can, you can like, like this video. What's not to like, like the video, share this on your socials. If you want to, it really helps. Thank you very much. Danke schön. What you can also do is uh, you can leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these matchups. What do you think of these finals? Uh, I mean, not the finals, but these kind of of tournaments and uh, you can also become a sponsor of Timmy Talks. You can become a sponsor of the show and help the show grow, help to help to keep the show alive, to keep the wheels turning uh, by sponsoring us financially. And you can do that by becoming a patron. So there's probably a card appearing right now. Click on, uh, click on that info card and that will take you straight to Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can check out how you can sponsor the show. And, and even by going to the page, you're already helping. So thank you very much. Uh, if you just 
go to the page and have a look. Talking about Patreon, talking about the patrons, let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the wonderful, fantastic, amazing patrons of Timmy Talks. Somebody can see.